Welcome to today's City Club Forum. My name is Lee Friedman and I have the privilege of serving as President of the City Club of Cleveland. For 95 years and from the heart of downtown Cleveland, Ohio, the City Club has served as one of the nation's premier public podiums for civic dialogue about the most important topics of our day. It is my pleasure this afternoon to introduce our distinguished guest. Since 2005, Sister Carol Keehan serves as the President and CEO of the Catholic Health Association of the United States. This is the nation's largest group of partnerships aimed at improving community health and creating compassionate health care. Sister Carol is the third woman religious chief executive in the organization's 90-year history. As the President and CEO, her mission is to ensure that the United States develops a fair and just health care policy for all its citizens, including the 47 million plus who do not have health insurance today. Sister Carol works with the hundreds of thousands of women and men who provide the ministry's unique human touch to people in need across the continuum of care. Her work with the Catholic Health Association is focused on making health care more responsive by finding the big picture solutions that have the most impact. Sister Carol brings a powerful spirit of mission and purpose to every organization she has led. Forty years ago, she joined the Daughters of Charity, and she is a registered nurse by training. On the front lines of health care, Sister Carol has a keen understanding of the leadership necessary to make a national association unified and effective. Sister Carol gained a wide breadth of strategic and operational experiences as board chair of Ascension's Health Sacred Heart Health System in Florida, and is former president and CEO of Providence Hospital in Washington, D.C. She is also a former chairperson of the District of Columbia's Hospital Association. Sister Carol was the first woman to be named Modern Healthcare's Most Powerful Person in Healthcare in 2007. She also received the cross for the church and pontiff bestowed by Pope Benedict XVI. Please join me in welcoming the president and CEO of the Catholic Health Association, Sister Carol Keehan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lee. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak with you in this historic and prestigious forum. It is a great honor for me to be with you today. My topic today impacts all of us. And whether you are of the vintage that chooses newspapers and periodicals as your media of choice, or television, or the internet, or the blog, it only takes a few minutes any day in any medium to get a picture of the misery so many people experience in this country because of our failure to develop a rational health delivery system. We also see a huge impact economically. In fact, the Commonwealth Fund just released their report on the cumulative changes in national health expenditures. And between 2000 and 2007, the net cost of family private health insurance premiums went up 91%. At the same time, personal health care expenses have gone up 65%. And workers' earnings in that same seven-year period have risen only 24%. It is easy to appreciate, when you look at these figures, how challenging it is for the average American family to keep up with their health care expenses. In fact, among American families who have had to file for bankruptcy, greater than 50% of them report it is because of medical expenses. We hear constantly how, about how our health system is making the American economy less competitive in the world market. Everyone agrees we are becoming more global. And at the same time, we continue to fail to address a serious competitive disadvantage for United States businesses. Just recently, the McKinsey Global Institute released a report noting that in 2005, the United States spent over 16% of its GDP on health care, while the median for other developed countries was 8.5%. 
Business leaders constantly complain about the competitive disadvantage they face. When you look at our history, in 1960, we spent only 5.2% of our GDP on health care. The McKinsey report points out that for the first time today in this country, we spend more on health care than on food. A new study by the New American Foundation Program found that U.S. firms spent twice as much in 2005 as their comp foreign competitors. For every American making $18 per hour, United States companies spent $2.38 per hour on health insurance. In contrast, firms in Canada, Japan, Germany, the United Kingdom, and France paid an average of $20 per hour and spent 96 cents per hour on health insurance. And yet, with all this spending, the mortality and morbidity in this nation are significantly behind many other countries. In fact, our Institute of Medicine reported several years ago that because of the failure to have insurance for everyone and the consequences of uninsurance and underinsurance, we have every year in this country at least 18,000 unnecessary deaths because people are, are, are either uninsured or they cannot access the treatment they need. That is a silent tsunami every year that we are not facing up to. All of these factors contribute to enormous human suffering. And any opinion poll, any magazine, or any film on health topics brings us face to face with the real people and the real suffering they endure. That suffering and a growing intolerance with the current situation is also promoting a new wave of interest in health care reform. People are demanding change, recognizes that health, recognizing that health care and the economy are connecting, and they are even increasingly willing to view the government as a partner. Despite the growing interest in change, there are currently a vast number of people in this country who face serious challenges finding health care for themselves and their family. And sadly, they are becoming the majority. Some because they have no insurance. It is inconceivable to many other countries that the United States would have greater than 47 million people who are uninsured, 9 million of whom are our children. But that is the documented case. And given our current economic situation, it appears that that number is only likely to grow larger. At the same time, many millions of Americans are barely holding on to, it, to their insurance. They are sacrificing many other things, such as food, clothing, vacations, and college tuition, in order to afford and sustain their health insurance premium. Many other millions have health insurance coverage that is structured in such a way that the significant co-pays and deductibles have become an absolute barrier to accessing health care except in emergencies. These are people we list as having insurance. These are the insured among us whose out-of-pocket expenses are so significant that they forego recommended preventive care such as mammograms and colonoscopies and defer following up on early warning signs. A recent Commonwealth Fund study found that 40% of adults in this country with insurance with deductibles of $1,000 or more reported one of four access problems. They did not fill a prescription. They did not see a specialist when they needed to. They skipped a recommended test, treatment, or follow-up, or had a medical problem but did not see a doctor. That's 40% of a group of people with insurance. If they had a $500 deductible, 25% reported one of those four problems. 